，阅读科技旅行，生活可以很大，对话设计学习，思考不嫌太多。这里是 iTunes 获奖播客《狗熊有话说》，一听就停不下来的哦。Hello， 你好，欢迎收听独立脱口秀《狗熊有话说》（Bear Talk）， 我是主播大狗熊。云南呢是一个旅游的大省，除去昆明这个八线城市之外呢，其实，在云南的各地都有很多值得去看一看、体验一下的旅游资源。那很多城市和地区呢都非常的令人向往，比如说像大理呀、啊、丽江呀、啊、香格里拉、泸沽湖。等等，这些地方都很值得去看。呃，自然呢也有很多喜欢旅行的各国朋友来到这儿，有的呢就会在这儿常住一段时间，可以更好的感受和体会一下中国文化，或者说云南的民俗文化。在昆明的一个我的朋友 Stephen 就是其中的一员。Stephen 呢，他是爱尔兰人啊、呃，你来到昆明应该已经有两年多的时间了。作为一个 Java 程序员。我们呢，其实经常见面。虽然我不是写程序的，但是都是技术宅，所以很多时候呢，都可以聊，呃，关于技术方面，关于在昆明的生活，呃，衣食住行方面的话题，都可以聊一聊。那好死不死呢，这个 Stephen 在去年呀，也做了一个英文的播客啊、呃。这个播客没有放在 iTunes 里面，因为它是苹果的，呃。这个敌对敌对势力就是安卓那边的一个一个主力啊，啊、呃，他在自己的网站上呢做了一个播客叫《Rise of China》啊、呃，这个听名字好像很很像咱们爱国青年的这个名字啊，《中国崛起》《中国的崛起》那这样的一个播客，那每一期呢他都会请一些自己的朋友，有一些呢是生活在昆明的外国人啊，也有一些呢是他本国的朋友呢聊一聊。关于这个中国这个城市啊，中国的城市，或者说在中国生活的各种感受和体会。那上一期呢，呃，我呢也去到了他的博客里面做客啊，用非常差劲的中文和他一起聊了一聊关于在中国或者说在昆明生活的一些感受和体会。呃，所以这一期节目接下来你要听到的呢，就是。呃 ，Stephen 的播客《Rise of China》里面的我的那一段采访啊，或者说这个一起聊天的内容，呃，友情提醒一下啊，因为我的英文发音呢非常的不标准啊，因为咱来自八线城市边疆地区嘛啊，所以能理解的。然后呢，这个整个播客其实聊得非常散，原先呢我想给他配上这个中文的翻译，就像之前在做那个。呃 a v a r o 呃 m a c r i s 和那个呃 ，Evernote 那那几期专题节目那样的方式来做，但后面发现这个因为聊得太散了，这样去做意义不大，所以呢，就还是放上了原本的这个英文的呃原版啊、呃。如果您不是太喜欢这种呃两个人用一个标准的外国人和一个非常不标准的中文发音，呃，中文英式。哎，怎么说？中式英文发音的这个呃，中国人呢，在一个播客里面扯淡的话呢，那就不要不用再听这一期了。所以这一期呢，呃，当做狗熊有话说的一个番外篇啊，番外篇，咱们来听一听外国人眼中的中国城市。嗯，接下来呢，就是我在《Rise of China》上面的录音。Welcome to the Rise of China show, where you can discover how to benefit from the rise of China and learn Chinese efficiently at brainstormlanguages.com. This is the first part in a two-part series with Chinese Travis Liu, who runs an app development company in China, and his podcast. Bear Talk was awarded the iTunes China 2013 Best Social and Cultural Podcast. In this episode, I explain to Travis why I find China difficult to live in, boiling it down to psychological principles, and he gives his views on my thoughts and experiences. 
Today we cover the need to feel comfortable, construction, the ambition to be a superpower, not smoking, you don't care about us, you only care about your health, marginalized from mainstream Chinese society, make an alternative lifestyle, the need to be surrounded by people who have similar values, principles and behaviors, petrol quality and the air, the convenience of living in Xiamen, doing business and thoughts on location. Hi Travis, how are you today? Hi, hi, Stephen. Uh, I'm great. <laughs> Thank you. Kind of wanted just to start off explaining like why I feel that living in China has been difficult for me. The way I see it is, is it's not uh, just down to uh, cultural reasons. I kind of split things into like situations. For example, you know that about the amount of construction going on in China just now. You could say it's the construction era, which is I think mm-hmm. more and more coming, uh, reducing just now. It's definitely been a huge construction boom, and I think the issue with that is that、um, it's hard actually to live in a place that there isn't construction, and at night time it just goes on throughout the night. So actually, it's、um, affected、uh, my sleep a lot. And before I was in China, I didn't have sleep problems. Now in China, I have sleep problems. So,、uh, what's your take on that? I think now. For China, it's a common issue that、uh, construction is everywhere, and I'm also bothered by this problem.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, for example, my my wife, and uh, she uh, sometimes in the morning and、uh, in the holiday while she is sleeping, there are a lot of construction noise coming out,、mm-hmm. and uh, uh, we are bothered by that. And、uh, I've I've traveled to some、uh, Western countries. And、uh, at least they don't、uh, they don't do it at night. So、mm-hmm. uh, it's it's also、uh, I think uh, in China uh, we will try to、uh, get used to it, and but it's not a, a right thing to do <laughs> at night. Of、mm-hmm. course, course in China、uh, a constructive age is、uh, is understandable. So、uh, mm-hmm. uh, we are in a fast pace and developing. Era, uh, but uh, if we do it day and night without any、uh, rules, and、mm-hmm. it will be a big problem for everybody. For Chinese people, there there are also the same problems.、Mm-hmm. Yes, because like I know, like、uh, Dubai has the same problem of construction at night time. But、yeah. the reason they construct at night time is because during the day,、uh, the concrete would, when it sets, it would fracture. So、uh-huh. it has to be done at night, but in China, it doesn't have to be done at night. Except, I think it helps the, the construction companies to boost the profits to turn around the buildings much faster. Because I、yeah. know there's a law. I think it's at eleven o'clock at night that construction should stop. Yeah, it's all about money. <laughs> <Yeah> . Sometimes, <laughs> uh, uh, for example,、uh, at night you will hear some big truck. Delivering some、uh, garbage at night, and they are really noisy. And because at that time、uh, there will be no policeman,、uh, traffic there is no、uh, limitation for for traffic.、Mm-hmm. So、uh, they they will do that at night. It's more、uh, productive, but nobody will obey the rule.、Uh, there there is a rule that、uh, you you can't do that till six o'clock. Oh, six But, o'clock.、Uh, well,、wow, okay. Yeah, yeah. But there is no、uh, how to say. There is no implementation of the law.、Yeah. Yes. So、uh, nobody will be punished、mm-hmm. if there is no、uh, policeman or somebody just、uh, in charge,、uh, and they they don't obey the rule. If there is some kind of leader or、uh, some VIP visit, and a policeman will、uh, take in charge, and、uh, everybody will obey the rule at days. And、mm-hmm. uh, for for days or for weeks,、mm-hmm. and after that they will go do, back、uh, to normal. Go back, yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> I I think uh, uh, it's also a lot of people, a lot of Chinese、uh, realize the problems, and now w- our civil rights、mm-hmm. just、uh, become.、Uh, we realize we have right. Everybody have their right, and we try to complain and and try to. Uh, try to do something, and、mm-hmm. as an individual, that's much、uh, common than before. In the future, if everybody care about our own rights, the problem will be solved. Yeah, it cannot be、uh, solved by 
government or something is should be、uh, solved by ourselves. Because、mm-hmm. yeah, there is power in、uh, joining together,、um, power in the masses. But、um, I think there, I feel like being in China, that a lot of Chinese feel that they are disempowered. Uh, that they they don't they don't have rights.、So、it's not even worth trying. It's just best to put up with it. But、mm-hmm. I mean, is is that what you see?、Uh, yes, it's really a big country, and there are a lot of people.、Uh, how to say?、Uh, in different、uh, area,、uh-huh. di- different problems, and uh, uh, maybe in the more developed area like Beijing, Shanghai. Uh, the teenager, the young youth, they they have their opinion about something, and they they will try to try to fight、uh, for their right.、Mm-hmm. But for a lot of people, try to get used to it.、Mm-hmm. Uh, we will realize that it's not right. And、uh, if we become、uh, thinking about that,、uh, it is not the right thing.、Mm-hmm. Because the、uh, the thing is, is that I think that. The government's always had like、um, the vision that to, for China, the ambition to be the world's leader, to be number one in the world. And in order to fulfill that, then that's why construction is done over twenty-four hours period all over China, because that's the main goal. So any any other consideration is just secondary to that. Oh yes, I had、um, uh, someone who lived in my area, and and、uh, her parents complained every well no, most nights to. The police about the construction noise, and what、mm-hmm. what well, the result of that was for that night the construction would stop, but the day after that it would just continue again into night. So yeah, they had to、yeah. keep on making multiple phone calls. So、yes. that that's what the status quo was. So it was like、uh, the the police would concede to them for one night, and then then, but I mean the the these uh, construction companies uh, have so much power in China and have so much. Guanxi, you know,、uh, yes, relationships yes.、Uh, with、uh-huh. powerful people that that、uh, you know it's hard to stand stand up against that, isn't it? Yeah. Because I um, I, it's a, a funny story. Well, it's not a funny story. It's just、uh, it struck me as a bit ironic. Was、uh, I have this friend and、uh, her family is in construction. They paid for her her daughter to go off to France, and and she was basically、uh, studying English there for a year. She came back, and I met up with her, and her family set up this investment company. It's called P two P. I think it's really big in China. This concept of new source of lending. I kind of as a kind of Chinese way, they like to tell me, you know, how how well they're doing.、Uh, she said that her dad's given her a three hundred meters squared house to live in, and、uh, wow. and and then her dad's speaking to me、uh, about the company, and he said, yeah, we all. Put in ten million yuan together as the investment because it's it's investment company, so that's the minimum、uh-huh. to ensure、uh, that you can set up an investment company. And I was thinking, oh, you know,、uh, okay, but you know what, you 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 guys have made so much money, but <laughs> but the flip side is your companies have made <laughs> not being able to sleep. Yeah, like、uh, the result is that like in China, like I've been taking sleeping tablets in order to sleep, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, and 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 wearing、uh, construction headphones, you know, construction earmuffs, to to be able to block out the sounds. And、uh, so yeah, you know, it's just it just felt kind of ironic. And I was thinking, well, you know, good for you, successful. But was that the kind of like the cost of of me and, and many other people in a way? So so it just felt a bit ironic. There's a construction issue, and、um, there's also another issue that、uh, I found really difficult in China is to do with smoking. Oh、uh, yes, <laughs> smoking <laughs> is a big issue, in, especially in Yunnan. Yunnan yeah. Yes, yes. What it really does, I mean, all these difficult situations has made me kind of analyze like my、uh, principles, my Yuans,、uh, and to me, I've realized that I have a pretty much a zero tolerance mindset about smoking. I kind of feel that it's kind of my right that I shouldn't have to be subjected to smoke. I mean, if I went to a bar or a nightclub. You know, yeah. Obviously, I'd be you know put up with it, but I kind of feel that if I'm going to a restaurant, cafe, or if I'm in the workplace, or in a study environment, or even in my house, that I should、mm-hmm. be able to have the right 
to not uh, be subjected to uh, secondhand smoke. But because that's how it is, that's what I've got used to, you see. That's how it's been in Europe. And and that's only come around be- through legislation. You know, before, you know, there was a lot of people smoking in public places. But I'm mm-hmm. that's what I'm used to. That's my standard now. And then to come to China, it almost feels like my quality of life is reducing in that way. Because instead of being in the power position as a non-smoker in the West, where you can basically dictate to smokers say you shouldn't smoke here in china it's the smokers that have the power (laughs) yeah (laughs) if if i complain about smoking people think i am the weird person like Uh you know what what on earth why are you making a big fuss you know so so this this is quite stressful for me because i can't actually control my environment in that way and and actually i found i found it at various points in my life in china almost impossible to get away from cigarette smoke even like i mentioned i was speaking to um uh, one of the people who runs gold coming and i was mm-hmm. telling him that, that that when i open the windows in my apartment in summer that smoke actually comes in you know sometimes you know uh-huh yes what i'm trying to explain is that the idea of like certain situations uh, making you feel that you you cannot get into your own comfort zone. I think everybody needs to feel comfortable and yes. have their environment uh, somewhere, sometime in the way that they want it. I mean, everybody has to be flexible. I mean, you might have. I mean, it could, it's not just about being in the country. It's, I mean, even like in a work environment, you obviously have to be flexible to other people's uh, way of doing things, needs, or you know, um, just in situations you don't have the power to control your environment, but. I've noticed in China that it's sometimes come to the point where I feel I don't have any control uh, in any place uh, to the point where I'm comfortable. And that uh-huh. that's very stressful. Yes. And uh, when you uh, speak of uh, smoking, uh, it's become a big issue also uh, also for me. Mm-hmm. And uh, as a Chinese, uh, I, I have uh, a different uh, perspective. And uh, it's sometimes not just a, a health issue. It's become a, a, how to say, a socializing or a relationship ceremony for for some people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, for example, if I'm a freshman uh, in a new company or a new uh, department, and my leader or uh, my manager invite me to go out to smoke and to discuss something, it's kind of like if you refuse him, uh, said I don't smoke. It's mm-hmm. kind of like a uh, impolite, uh, yeah. not a polite thing in, mm-hmm. uh, to do in China. And uh, I think people uh, will take health second issue mm-hmm. and uh, relationship or mianzi. First. Or, uh, yes, it's the first issue. Uh, okay. And uh, when I was uh, a few years ago, when I was a freshman in a new company, I also have this uh, kind of same issue. And sometimes, if you uh, really insist that I don't smoke, then mm-hmm. uh, they will say, "Okay." But you, you will find you you lose some way of socialize with other people, and sure, uh, yeah. And it, it's also like a, a sacrifice, or you, you lo- lose something. Other people's behavior will affect you, so mm-hmm. you will become a smoker. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then I realize uh, now. For a lot of people, and uh, especially when they uh, have the the health is the first uh, issue. Uh, if they have this kind of value, and uh, they will try to uh, try to uh, hold their uh, point that I don't smoke, and this is a non-smoking era, and mm-hmm. please don't smoke. But it's really hard because, uh, uh, as you said, in China, this is uh, especially for example in Yunnan province. Non-smoker is the minority yeah. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, so it's really uh, an, an issue for for mm-hmm. everybody. I think um, you know when you say that the non-smokers are a minority, uh, there's another um, Chinese cultural concept that comes into play, and that is basically the group has more importance over the individual. So if the majority yes. of the people believe a certain thing, or, um, for example, believe that they should be able to smoke freely, if you disagree with that, that's kind of, is that kind of selfish in a way? Yes. Uh, some people will think, yeah, you, you, you are not uh, easy to get along with. Mm-hmm. Uh, you are not a team player. Yeah. <laughs> you are uh-huh. just, uh, just like you said, selfish. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, uh, some people were uh, uh, really afraid uh, of being recognized as a selfish people 
and they will hide their really what they really want or the what they really hate. Try to become a team player,、mm. and、uh, this is a kind of value that our parents told us、uh, when we are really young. But now I think the the younger people, some people born in 1990s, they are really、uh, has their individual、uh, value. I think what they really want, they will say, and they don't like, they will also say it out loud. But、uh, for our age、uh, and、uh, some people older than me, we, sometimes we really thinking about other people's opinion. And、uh, as a Chinese,、uh, we are really thinking about. What will I do if other people、uh, don't like me or some so, something like that?、Mm-hmm. I, I think it's a, a really uh, a different value、uh, it become because of different control. Maybe in、uh, Eastern countries like Japan and China, we have this kind of problem. But、uh, in Western countries, individual w- will be respected、uh, no matter、uh, what. Different value you have, and and you also individuals can,、uh, should not affect other people and other people's、uh, life. You cannot judge other people's life, no matter how different、uh, they they are with、uh, compared to yours. Yeah,、uh, yeah. So that's maybe the、uh, basic different of、uh, value different.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. In a while back, I think it was the China Daily newspaper, and it was a no- whole article about、um, Chinese attitudes and understanding、uh, smoking. And、mm-hmm. it said something like、uh, they did a study, and they said it was only twenty percent of Chinese fully understood the long-term health implications of smoking.、Mm-hmm. So that could be, I think, another angle that the people just、uh, kind of see is not really they know it's unhealthy, but. Not really fully appreciating what it can cause—the lung cancer, the, all the damage、uh, to the body, and、um, you know, kind of premature death at the end of the day. So, yeah, I think in the West, when you if you complain to someone about cigarette smoke, there's a more kind of like appreciation that it is actually really bad for your health.、Um, uh-huh. But maybe in China, maybe not so of that view. It's just like, yeah, well, you know, we know it's bad, but you know, but it's not that bad. So don't make like a, a huge deal out of it, kind of thing. Uh, thinking of a short term, <laughs> so、yeah. it's not a long term problem. It's only、uh, short term problem. So yeah,、uh, yeah, but, but、uh, mm-hmm. yeah, that's a that's a common issue for that. The other angle that、uh, I found difficult in China、uh, was food. Not because I mean I really enjoy、uh-huh. Chinese food. I enjoy all the tastes and everything. But、uh, unfortunately for me, I've seemed to come to have like a. A reaction to the oil that's used in a lot of restaurants uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. It causes gastritis, you know, way、um, you end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, is that you know,、um, I've been in China for about three years. I think maybe it might come to about forty percent of the time that I've been、uh-huh. taking anti-acid tablets in order to reduce the acid in my stomach for my stomach to heal. That's kind of、uh, well, obviously restricted where I can go. There's、uh, there's very few restaurants that I can go to, and、uh, that's been a real stress. Because、uh-huh. I've had to change my lifestyle, and for example, pretty typical situation. If you want, you want to reach out to、uh, make Chinese friends. Chinese friends might say, "Well, let's go to a restaurant and eat," or "Let's go to KTV." Now, in,、mm-hmm. in KTV or in the restaurant, well, I can't eat the food; it's going to make me ill because of the oil.、Uh-huh. If I go to the KTV, then can't really drink with them because I've got gastritis. Uh-huh. And in KTV, it's, it's a small room, so probably it's going to be very full with smoke. So I'm quite restricted. It's like in China, I have to find ways around things. You know, I can still make chongguo pang. You know, I can still make friends with Chinese people, but、uh-huh. it's just that I feel like I'm segregated from mainstream society. That I'm not. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, because because if I live, the longer I live here, the more、uh-huh. I feel that I want to be fully integrated, and I see that I cannot. Like I'm, I'm on the margin of society. I can't do normal things that that other Chinese people would do in order to completely integrate into normal so- social situations. So, I mean, that's a real conundrum for me. What, what's your take on that? I think、um, I have the same problem, but uh, uh, as a different、uh, as a Chinese, I have some、uh, some different perspective.、Uh, first is Chinese food. Um, uh, I think it's become、uh, because of historical reason.、Uh, I I also have a different time 
and at first I enjoyed the Yunnan food. Of course,、uh, it's really、uh, with a lot of uh, uh, spicy and oil, and it's uh, really uh, heavy <laughs> for our stomach.、Mm-hmm. And but、uh, before that, I didn't realize that. Of course,、uh, I've eat that kind of food every day, and it become okay. Did a lot of travel and、uh, some for work, some uh, some uh, is just uh, uh, for holiday, and、uh, in other area、uh, of China like Zhejiang or、uh, Jiangsu and uh, Shanghai, uh, the food is really light. There will be no、uh, not so much oil,、mm-hmm. but in Beijing、uh, it will be become oil again, <laughs> heavy, heavy again, and、uh, then then I do a little research. Uh, for that, of course, in the past,、uh, Yunnan is a place、uh, really hard to to travel in ancient times.、Mm-hmm. So we have to deliver our、uh, luggage or some、uh, a lot of things by horses.、Uh, so to preserve、uh, the food. Yes. So、uh, if the food with a lot of oil, you will not feel hungry、uh, shortly. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, for example, if you eat a lot of big meat and and some uh, really uh, food with a lot of oil, it will、uh, stay longer. Fill you up you, for longer, yeah.、Uh-huh. Yeah. So that's because、uh, hi- some historical re- reason for that.、Mm-hmm. And at first, I, I didn't realize that, and I, I feel it's good. And some Chinese barbecue, they are really、mm-hmm. a lot of oil and spicy. And then now I and my wife and we really、uh, like some、uh, light food, even some Japanese food that's better.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, of course, it's really light. And we after that, when we had our supper or, or lunch,、uh, it will be re-、uh, fresh, and、uh, I will still feel feel good for that. And I think、uh, Chinese food,、uh, they are、uh, really a big. Different in Kunming, in other city, and、uh, even in Kunming, you can still try some、uh, some light Chinese food, and、uh, but maybe a lot of food、uh, with spicy, yeah, yeah.、Uh, but the, you can still choose、uh, some light food. It's also the same problem for Chinese people, and uh, uh, some of my friend come、uh, come from、uh, other cities, and they don't get used to Yunnan food. Mm-hmm. With a lot of oil and spice,、mm-hmm. and、uh, but they will find their own、uh, restaurant,、uh, their favorite restaurant or their favorite place to have their their dinner, and、yeah. that will be okay.、Uh, when you said a KTV, yes,、uh, when when we have some social socializing with friend,、uh, went to KTV,、mm. karaoke, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. So. With a lot of smoking,、uh, era, uh, narrow space and smoking and uh, drinking, uh, but at first、uh, in in some main street、uh, kind of entertainment, it, yes, it's like that. I I find some friends and、uh, they don't smoke.、Mm-hmm. Some friends of my wife and some friends from friends of mine they don't smoke, and sometimes we just gather around to KTV,、uh, and sometimes we don't even buy beer. Uh, mm-hmm. By by any drink,、uh, by alcohol drink,、mm-hmm. and we just buy some soda water or something. We don't smoke. Still、uh, have fun. But、uh, in the main street、uh, value, we said、uh, it's not entertaining. <laughs> It, you you have to drink beer.、Mm-hmm. And now we try to get away from that kind of stuff. Of course, if you don't、uh, feel happy in that place and.、Uh, Uh, just stay away from it. I, I also don't like narrow space, and <laughs> so、mm-hmm. some、uh, the air not good, and some some people smoke, and、uh, try to say no. It's hard. It's harder <laughs> for for Chinese. But、uh, w- w- now I try to say I don't like that. Okay, we can、uh, do something else, and、uh, or that's what what I do now.、Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. And in the past, I I can't do that. <laughs> I still think. Okay,、uh, I'm still be afraid of、uh, some other people said that you are selfish. You just、uh, only care about your own health and、uh, <laughs> don't, don't care. 
That sounds yeah. so weird to, for a Westerner to hear. You only care about your own health. That's, I mean, yes. that, I think Westerners uh, will find that quite funny. Yeah, yeah. They, they will say, you don't care about your friends. You only care <laughs> about you. You don't you care about your health. health. And uh, at first, I, I'm afraid of other people saying that. But yeah. now I think that's the right thing. <laughs> I mm. have to, mm-hmm. uh, nobody will care about your health more than you. Yeah. If you if you don't care that, nobody will care that for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. We want to grow our community to become a leading resource on how to help foreigners understand and benefit from the rise of China and the Chinese language. Join our mailing list on brainstormlanguages.com and you can choose which type of info you want to be updated on. If you want to show our community your support, we'd love it if you subscribe to our show on iTunes, rate us or leave us a comment there. Because that, that brings me around what you've just said is to a concept that uh, I felt like really important that I've thought about b- because of my life in China. Is, and I think it's really important for everyone to be surrounded by people who have approximately the same values, principles and behavior as them. So you've just said that basically you've chosen a kind of lifestyle that you wanted or what you felt was healthy or what you wanted. And you surrounded yourself by people who had the same values and so it was not a problem because everybody mm-hmm. is interested in doing the same thing in the same way so there's no kind of conflict and I think mm-hmm. I think that's something I feel in China that particularly to do with health for example uh, air quality that uh, for me I knew that come to China that the air quality would be a problem I think the statistic from the, the World Health Organization mm-hmm. that basically 1% of Chinese, uh, 1% of the area in Chinese cities is within the the World Health Organization pollution limit. Mm -hmm. So I always knew that there would be an issue. So I I ended up coming to Kuming. One of the reasons was was because Kuming is as a large city in China, it's not even large in China, 7 million is a normal city, uh, but large by uh, Western standards, that the air pollution was far far lower it's one of the best cities as far as air quality is concerned and so that's why i came to kuming but even in kuming i do clash with other people's or certain chinese people's view of air quality because for example when i get on the bus which Mm -hmm. is supposed to be an air conditioned bus so the idea behind an air conditioned bus is that the windows are sealed in order for the air conditioning to work and cool down the bus or allow uh, airflow throughout the bus but the buses have been constructed so that there's air conditioning and, mm-hmm. and it actually you pay double the price for that, but it, can't, yes. it, but it, can, it practically can never be used because the windows are able to be opened and people will open all the windows. Uh, uh-huh. And to me, in my mindset, it's clear that if you open the windows, pollution from outside, I can visibly smell it, it's strong. I think the statistic that I saw that applied to roads on the west, if you open the windows when you're in a car in the west, uh, you get four times the pollution than you would if you were walking on the side of the road. So, And I think the other issue about China is that I always kind of wondered why, like when I was in Kuming, that, or in China in general, but where I live in Kuming, so why it was that when there was cars on the road, but not so many, that I really smelled a strong smell of car exhaust or pollution or ozone or whatever it was, that yeah. if it was the same amount of cars in the West, I wouldn't smell it. And then it all became clear when I watched uh, the documentary Under the Dome, which is done uh-huh. by the CCTV uh, news presenter. It's a brilliant documentary. And she said that basically in China, petrol quality, the mm-hmm. quality of the fuel is at a much lower standard. So that's why it produces much more pollution. Mm-hmm. Getting back to the point of values is a uh, long story short is what I'm trying yeah. to say is that when I get on the bus, uh, people will open the windows uh, because they feel that that allows air to come and circulate inwards and they're happy and they think that's good. But to me, I feel, can't you smell that, that a huge amount of pollution that you're breathing in? So my way around it is that I have one choice is either not to get the bus or to wear a PM 2.5 mask and I, and, I, and I wear it on the buses sometimes. But you see what I mean? It's just like, it's about that issue of getting back to being comfortable, that I always have to find a solution around things in China because my values uh, about pollution are not the same as the people, well, not all the people around me, but quite a few of the people around me. For Chinese now, especially in our age, this problem should be told and told again, and uh, it should be educated again and again. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, now not everybody realizes that uh, it's, uh, the air pollution is really bad for our health. Maybe they think, yeah, it's bad, but they, they don't realize due to a really harmful for our body. When you say in the air conditioning bus, uh, people will turn on the window, uh, they don't realize that it's bad for their health. They uh, get used to open the window and enjoy the fresh air, but mm-hmm. the, the air is not fresh. Uh, for example, in Beijing, and sometimes the air condition is really bad and mm-hmm. uh, some uh, PM 2.5, maybe more uh, over than 400, and it's real, really bad. And nobody will open the window because they can see it uh, <laughs> yeah. with their own eyes. The air is bad. But in, in Kunming, we will really get used to what we've, we've lived in the past. But I have some uh, really bad feelings. Uh, the air is really bad now, according to uh, compare with uh, five years ago or even three years ago mm-hmm. uh, and my wife w- w- uh, she's been in New Zealand for one year they're so fresh there yeah yeah it's so fresh when she come back she said Kunming's air is not as clean as one year before really wow. but for us we stay here every day and we cannot see the different mm. uh, I-, I think the air pollution problem should be more educated uh, to be tell again and again uh, until everybody realized that it's become a big problem mm-hmm. and uh, for uh, our Chinese we also have this kind of argument and uh, of course some of my friends Kunmin's and they're always really proud about Kunmin's arrow mm-hmm. and think even other city is uh, more developed but the air condition is not good compared to Kunming. And some of my other friends, uh, they, uh, it's the same. Of course, um, it, you are in a big, uh, you are still in China, and mm. uh, uh, the, the city's development is similar uh, as other cities. It's only a matter of time, so uh, it will become uh, bad. And there are still some arguments in my friend's group, and uh, I'm not really optimistic about this uh, course uh, uh, when we go Western countries or even East Asia countries like Thailand uh, in Bangkok a lot of cars air condition is not as bad as Kunming or as uh, other Chinese cities but that that's and, down one of the main reasons is because of the uh, petrol quality yes yeah I think uh, the point is right uh, petrol quality maybe is a big issue of course, we, we can smell a uh, petrol <laughs> smell even on the street. Uh, when we stand in uh, other countries, even there are a lot of cars, you, you can't smell it. I think maybe it's uh, the main reason for, for that. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, that, that documentary, which can be seen on YouTube, Under the Dome, I highly recommend anybody to watch it if you really want to understand China's uh, air pollution problem. It's a very, very good watch. The statistic was that on that documentary that they said half a million Chinese people a year die because of air pollution. Wow, that's a big number. Yeah. Yes. Basically, I feel kind of like I've spent three years learning Chinese and like I really want to feel free and integrate into China. But if Mm -hmm. I look at the places that I can go, I'd love to live in Shanghai. I think Shanghai is a really fascinating, you know, high-paced uh, city. But mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't be willing to live there because of the air pollution. I was thinking of, because of some of the issues that I, I was just mentioned to do with the problems I've been having, that I'm considering moving to Xiamen. Because mm-hmm. uh, that's, on, that's on the coast, that's quite near Shanghai, that's opposite Taiwan, isn't it? Yes, it's a much better place, yes. The other issue that um, I'm facing in China is that I've met so many Chinese students. I've met so many young people, but to meet like the stage I am, because I'm, you know, as you know, like uh, wanting to develop my business, Uh is that I want to meet business people. And I'm thinking, you know, Kunming province that it is, maybe I'd be best off going to a more developed city like Xiamen. And uh, being in like a more connected area, I mean, from Xiamen to Shenzhen, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. is beside Hong Kong, 
it's just a four hour bullet train ride so it's very mm -hmm. well connected it's near it's quite near shanghai and the, i heard that the pollution index is is, is is one of the top eight least polluted cities in china so mm -hmm. and if, from the point of view of i think there's much more business that goes on in Xiamen, and i think the mindset rather is more towards doing business than it would be in yunnan what, what's your view uh i think that's a really really good uh, choice to, to go if you want to do some business or future development i, I think uh, it's a uh, shenzhen it may be a better choice uh, but pollution is higher isn't it yeah uh, pollution is higher and of course uh, uh, when you try to do some business the environment is really important in Kunming, uh, it's not developed place Mm -hmm. And the atmosphere of business is uh, really, really, really low. For me, as an example, what I do is app development. Uh, app de uh, I am an app developer. And mm -hmm. uh, in Kunming, the client of uh, app developing is, uh, is really limited. Mm -hmm. But uh, in Beijing or in Shanghai, there are uh, all kinds of choices. And you can find your partner or clients, and uh, it's uh, it's much bigger. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities. And Xiamen, I think, uh, uh, it's a better choice for Kunming. Of course, mm -hmm. um, uh, in the coast area, Xiamen, the uh, the traffic is really uh, convenient. Of course, uh, the highway network, subway, and the Gaotie. Uh, high speed, high speed uh, train. Yes, yeah. so uh, it, it's uh, really, really development uh, developed, uh, and uh, it's really easy to to go to Shanghai or to meet some uh, some friends uh, all around that place. It's only a few hours if you go to a different a province, different city. Lifestyle of Xiamen is uh, kind of similar, like in Kunming. <laughs> it's also relaxed and. Mm -hmm. uh, Speed mm. is not that fast. The air is similar, uh, so I, I think it's a better choice, especially if you do something uh, with your business and um, uh, you can experience some different control of Kunming. And in Xiamen, uh, I think smoking will be a not serious problem if you live in Xiamen. And I also like that city. Mm -hmm. I've been there twice, uh, one for, for running and the other for visit friends. And I really like that place. Yes. Uh, most of your clients, I think uh, practically all of them, I think are not within Yunnan yes. province. They're yes. either in pretty much a uh -huh. lot in Beijing, yes. isn't it? Uh, all, nearly uh, 80 80% 80 of my clients they are in Beijing. And uh, some of them are in Hangzhou. And Yunnan, uh, I... I and my uh, my partners just uh, decide uh, we we try to get away <laughs> in in business uh, from Yunnan. Of course, uh, the value and their standard is not what we want to do, and uh, mm. we are doing uh, app developing, and this is should be an, a really high standard and in even international view, mm -hmm. uh, and with the cooperation uh, with clients in. Uh, in Beijing, and it's much easier to uh, communicate, uh, to work with. And our ideal job is to work wherever we can, uh, maybe not in Kunming, maybe in other place, like mm -hmm. also in Xiamen or mm -hmm. some small place. Uh, we, we can still get in touch with other people by internet. And this is our uh, final goal <laughs> for mm -hmm. daytime job. And uh, I think uh, it, it is possible because it is the age of internet and mm. everything is possible but it's a harder choice because uh, it's not the mainstream for graduated uh, student or for other college students just graduated and they, they, they try to find a stable job and uh, to to do this like a small team uh, it's a, there are a lot of uncertainties and you have to face that uh, but uh, it it will reward a lot, yeah. That's another thing that I did notice that when I was considering setting up business process in Yunnan, 
And、um, I was kind of、uh, making contact with a few students who were fluent in English about, you know, making,、uh, helping me、uh, create software, or just the the voiceover part, you know,、mm-hmm. sort of Chinese learning Chinese software. And、uh, I did feel that it's going to be issues trying to get the right、mm-hmm. person、uh, in Yunnan province. So yeah, so maybe the bigger cities、uh, on on the coast and the east coast would be easier to get more quality graduates.、Yes. I think and.、Uh, You can experience different city and by by living in, in it, and、uh, it's a really good opportunity to understand China. Because、mm. uh, when when you live in Kunming for、uh, four or five years,、uh, three years, and、uh, you get used to it,、uh, but the,、yeah. uh, it, it's really a huge huge country.、Uh, even for for our Chinese, different province. Uh, different uh, era, even different city,、uh, we have different、uh, value for for something, different control, and you you can experience that by living in a different con-、uh, different cities, and、uh, I think that, that it will help you get better uh, uh, choices in business, and also also uh, uh, your your lifestyle will different in in other place.、Mm-hmm. Yes. If you want to listen to Travis's podcast in Chinese, go to beartalking dot com. That's b e a r talking dot com. The link is in the show notes for this episode on my website. Thanks for listening to the Rise of China and how it can benefit you. Podcast at www dot brainstormlanguages dot com. Welcome to the Rise of China show, where you can discover how to benefit from the rise of China and learn Chinese efficiently at brainstormlanguages.com. This is the second part in a two-part series with Chinese Travis Liao, who runs an app development company in China. And his podcast, Bear Talk, was awarded the iTunes China 2013 Best Social and Cultural Podcast. One、uh, kind of last stress factor I wanted to talk about、uh, in Chinese,、uh, you will call it male soldier.、Uh-huh. So, can you kind of explain、uh, what that kind of means and what it means to you? I think it's、um, kind of ear-mannered people,、mm-hmm. or.、Um, They they don't realize their behavior will、uh, affect other people,、mm-hmm. and、uh, this is、uh, I think it's、uh, also a historical reason for that. Of、uh-huh. course,、uh, our education system sometimes didn't tell us how to get along with other people.、Mm-hmm. For example, when I was at school, we learned a lot science. Uh, geography and、uh, mathematics and everything, but there is something we didn't learn at the at school. For example, logic.、Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think that's really important. No matter you are、yeah. uh, uh, art student or science student or, or whatever, but at first it's really important. And、uh, manner, how to get along with other people.、Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes our elders、uh, they don't tell us.、Uh, they don't teach us. Of course. They also didn't learn that from school, and they, at that age, its material stuff is really limited,、mm-hmm. the, uh, without a lot of choice. Manner is not a big issue, because、uh, in the past, Chinese people really suffered of lack of everything,、mm-hmm. uh, lack of everything. Like、uh, if some people get a new TV or a new furniture,、uh, everybody envy him. Uh, because we are lack of things,、mm-hmm. uh, we are lack of this、uh, material, and、uh, at that time, manner is not become the first problem for everybody. And you you can fight with other people, struggle and to to get something. But now,、uh, it it's the result of no、uh, social person that、mm-hmm. uh, uh, ill mannered people.、Uh, you can see it everywhere.、Uh, even it it will affect our life. 
、uh, sometimes I drive in Kunming, and I I don't like it. Now I really try try not to to drive.、Uh, Try to walk or take a bus、mm-hmm. because、uh, when when you drive,、uh, the traffic is a big problem. But the other problem is other drivers.、Mm-hmm. They don't respect your way,、mm-hmm. and、uh, they try to、uh, drive without caring other people.、Mm-hmm. I actually got in an accident. I think it was three days ago. Uh huh. Girlfriend was driving uh, her Jianzhong、uh, Chu,、uh-huh. her electric、uh, motorbike. And I was on the back, and、um, we kind of like pulled up to make a, a left turn, but because、uh-huh. we couldn't make that left turn、uh, because there was traffic, so we were kind of like stuck in the middle of the road. But there was a motorbike; he was quite far away, and he was at, coming at a slow speed, and he saw us. But he—I didn't expect it, but I saw him p- applying the brakes, and、uh-huh. he was from a far distance. And I, I thought he's not going to hit us, but he—he <laughs> he, he hit, he hit us and knocked us off the bike. And、wow. then he actually hit my leg, so was, I was in pain. And so I got I got up off the bike, and then I said, and then I said to him, you know, look, your brakes are not working, you know. And he's like, oh, he's like, I'm very, very sorry, you know, do it, do it, you know. He was polite, but the thing was, is he was reckless because he he went out、uh, on that bike, and he knew his brakes were useless. Yeah. And so that was、uh... that was the issue. I didn't make a big issue of it. I just went. He, he apologized a lot. I didn't have a fracture or broken skin. I didn't bleed or anything, just bruising. So I just thought I'll go on my way. But if that was in the UK, or, or probably what would happen, I would say, you know, you just wait for the police to come, and then the police would give him a fine and three points off his license because of being reckless. But I didn't make、uh-huh. a big issue. But what what actually annoyed me the whole situation was there was a car of、uh, it was like a small van of about I think about twelve,、um, the lowest level of police. Uh, they、uh-huh. kind of they mind the streets or things like that, but they were all lying, like basically sitting or lying down in their in their little、uh, van, and they like they they burst out in laughter, and that <sighs> that really annoyed me because it's like, oh come on now, you know, like you're using taxpayers' money, you should be like、yeah. helping out, not like like laughing about the situation. I just like that that's what annoyed me, but but actually, um, I've had quite a few like、uh, foreign friends that said that they have been like、uh, hit by a, a motorbike usually. And、uh-huh. and even if it's the person's clearly that person's fault, that person <laughs> will not apologize and just like stare at them blankly. What what what's that、yeah. about? What, what's what, why do people do that? Because、um, from my perspective, like if if I do something that I know is clearly wrong, as a result, you know, hit someone or hurt someone, I, I would apologize. But why is it some people in China just won't apologize for something they know they've done that's wrong and they just stare at you blankly? Why does that happen? I think、um, yeah, it's also bother me because <laughs>、uh, there is a saying、uh, on the internet, social network、mm-hmm. of China, Xinlan、uh, Weibo, and there are a lot of people said we should ban violent films,、mm-hmm. uh, internet in, in the theater. We should ban that because to、uh, make people reckless, make people do something violent,、mm-hmm. and、uh, but. Uh, it's not right, cause only the education without manner, <laughs> and、mm-hmm. that's the reason、uh, people will do something like this.、Uh, the important thing is there is no punishment、mm-hmm. for their behavior. They they don't have to responsible for their、uh, for their behavior.、Uh, the the、uh, there there are rules, but the rules is just、um, just the rules. Nobody will、uh, take it seriously. Uh, I think uh, uh, if if the rules is really、uh, carried carry out and uh, uh, and people will do that if people uh, 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 break the rules they、mm-hmm. will be punished、mm-hmm. they will be punished and uh, some uh, some something will related for example with their credit、uh, if they break the traffic rule they are really hard to find、mm-hmm. a new job or something. There will be consequences to people's、yes. irresponsible behavior. There's been a lot of new legal reforms in China because China is going through a new phase now and is wanting to make society、uh, developed. One, I mean, I read on Wikipedia that Xi Jinping、uh-huh. wanted to by 2050 have China be a developed country, have a developed country status. So、uh-huh. I think now it's just a, a lots of social changes to do with more serious defines on polluters.
changes in uh, legal system to make sure that there's consequences across the board for a whole uh, wide spectrum of behaviors. Yeah. And even I heard two days ago the issue about policy on food safety because food safety is a, a real issue in China, isn't uh-huh. it? Yes, yes, it's a big issue now. I'd like to make an announcement. If you are starting learning Chinese, you can go to our site, brainstormlanguages.com, and download a free light version learning Chinese iTunes app. The full version will give you 150 of the most basic Chinese words along with example phrases which you can listen to. From my point of view as a Westerner, and you're talking about Chinese you know, growing up and not being kind of uh, used to interacting with other people so much, mm-hmm. and the whole thing because a lot of Chinese families are one child, so you know, if you have brothers and sisters, you get used to interacting with people and knowing that you can't have it all your way and having to uh, make a, and negotiate, make allowances... Mm -hmm. And then also, I think the other issue is that your exam system is so harsh. Oh, yes. There is no time to do anything else. So I think a lot of Chinese people, I feel that uh, the students, that they're just thinking about how to pass exams. That's their only only thought, really. So um, having time to do hobbies and interact with people in that way is, is something that maybe a lot of Chinese students don't have. And also the third angle is because of the population in China I have a lot of uh, student friends that talk about just there's so much competition here it's so competitive you know, it's, yes. so you have to look out for yourself you know mm-hmm. yes these three parts really kind of influence on Chinese society I think yes and I, I think maybe population is the biggest problem the mm-hmm. uh, biggest issue I've been to India a few years ago and it's quite similar uh, China and India yeah for sure uh, yeah. The, uh, a lot of competition and uh, people will do uh, something uh, it's also a kind of male social in, in India and the traffic yeah. is terrible and air pollution is, is the same and people will just don't care other people's convenience just uh, thinking about their own uh, mm-hmm. their own right but that, that's uh, the irony there because yeah. gonna because I, I want to stop you there just because uh, we, we talked about uh, before uh, in in your group of colleagues or friends or when you have relationships in China it's all about uh-huh. the group over the yeah. person but when you went in, but in China when you're talking about uh, like uh, strangers uh-huh. then you ha- the opposite applies that you think of yourself and not think of other people that kind of idea uh, yes, uh, it's a really traditional social value, I, mm-hmm. I think, in China for thousand years. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like intolerance or something. If you are in your social group, there are some people you, you care and uh, you, you have to behave good because mm-hmm. uh, judge your value. Mm-hmm. Your value is not who you are, it's what other people think you are mm-hmm. uh, in, in, in your social group. But in strangers' eyes, they are strangers in, in Chinese opinion, traditional Chinese opinion. They are strangers and you don't have to care about their opinion. Mm-hmm. It's become another group. Uh, it's uh, uh, maybe in the opposite group. When I am a driver, bicycle rider on the street, they are in other group. Uh, in Chinese opinion, they are in other group and not on your side. Mm-hmm. So they're irrelevant. Yes, irrelevant. And when when I was walk on the street, some people will think the drivers are really bad. But maybe the day after tomorrow, I will drive again, <laughs> and I I will think uh, the passenger on the street they are they are really bad. They they don't obey rules. They try to do some reckless things. But it's all judged by groups, and uh, that's a I think that's not a good way to do your uh, everything and. Uh, I also realized that some of, uh, maybe me, I have this kind of issue too and uh, try to get away from this way of thinking. But for a lot of Chinese people, they have this problem. Other people's opinion is really matter to you. Mm-hmm. But uh, if uh, they are a stranger, uh, you can ignore them <laughs> and uh, you, you, can, <laughs> you can do what you want and uh-huh. if, you, uh, if they are a stranger that's okay mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. but uh, if they are your group, you you have to care. <laughs> so yeah. uh, that that's uh, not a good value, I think. Because mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, the, there's another phenomena. A lot to do when you're queuing up, you're in line, and uh, people can see that uh, there's a line, and then they just will ignore that and just cut straight at the front. I mean, that must be a lot to do what you're saying that uh, just treat those people treating strangers as just irrelevant and just thinking, well, you know, I have my needs. I um, think it's fair enough that I just go to the front of the queue. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so it's a common <laughs> issue. Uh, Happens yeah. every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wanted to just like compare where I live in the block of flats where I live and my girlfriend's block of flats because in my block of flats Hundwo Bay Chai Fangs are there in. Like uh-huh. a lot of them they lived in kind of old buildings before and these buildings uh-huh. have been pulled down and new beautiful apartments have been created and they've been given the right to an apartment basically because they were living there before in uh-huh. the old uh, low-rise apartments. So I'm in with uh, a lot of these people that have been in that situation and I find that when I'm in the elevator, uh, sometimes with my girlfriend, sometimes by myself, that there'll be some people that will just like in the elevator stare me from head to toe uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, like a few times and then I will like stare at them and it's almost as if th- those people that do that when I'm staring at them they don't care it's like they, they just they continue to do it it's almost as if it, it doesn't matter what I want or if they can see that I'm kind of like not too happy about it they can obviously uh-huh. tell my expression that I'm not pleased about it and it's, they just continue to do it and uh, it, was, it was a couple of times now is that um, I've been in an elevator and like it's uh, been uh, a Chinese guy and he, he knows that my girlfriend's with me because we're like holding hands or whatever and he will uh-huh. like stare her up and down like in a discerning way you know just like um, kind of like you know, looking down on her uh-huh. uh, I think presumably that he's not pleased that she's with a westerner and then he will uh-huh. look her up and down a few times and then I've actually moved myself in the middle between them so that uh-huh. he can like stare at her anymore and when that happens uh, what usually happens is he will turn away because he doesn't want a conflict. Uh, nothing needs to be said. It's just like, you know, I stand in the middle. Uh, he knows that he, he doesn't want a conflict, so he doesn't say anything, and, and uh, basically it's the end of it. Uh-huh. But it's, uh-huh. it's, it's a bit stressful because when I come into my own block of flats, I know the elevator, you know, is going to be a bit of a pain. But in my uh, girlfriend's complex, I think there's a lot of kind of people from the, the government that live there, but th- this doesn't happen. Uh, yeah, it, it's a. Uh, uh, I I think they really don't have a lot of things to do uh, <laughs> every day. <laughs> they're really just wanderer, and uh, there's no <laughs> poor values. <laughs> yes, and um, for our Chinese, uh, we also think uh, uh, this kind of may of chai fang zi de their way of life. Uh, I think it's. Uh, just wandering and without anything to do and it's a uh, kind of pathetic <laughs> and I, I i think it's kind of pathetic for me mm-hmm. and uh, my way of dealing with this kind of disturbing is mm-hmm. uh if they don't offend me mm-hmm. or my family uh, i try to ignore, ignore them. them yeah ignore yeah. them is the best policy yeah yeah <laughs> for sure and for example i'm chinese i'm not a westerner but sometimes uh, when i went out to run jogging mm-hmm. and a wa- a wear a, a sport pants or something and some people they they, they just think it's a kind of funny and oh, they yeah. try <laughs> to try to look at me uh-huh. and my way is at first when i'm in a good mood i try to <laughs> ignore yeah, that mood, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah just ignore that mm-hmm. and when uh, when sometime i I'm not in a good mood. I'm mm. not a good person at that time. <laughs> I'll try to look that back and also uh, in the same way, uh, look me in, in uh, some... Uh, Disrespectful way. Yeah, yeah I'm looking the, the same way. And some mm. t- uh, because I'm, I'm a bigger person, <laughs> so mm. sometimes it's really... Uh, they, they were feel a f- kind of afraid or kind of... Yeah, uh, yeah. Yes, they, they were turned mm. back. And mm. sometimes I just look at that and judge their uh, behavior and <laughs> judge their mm-hmm. uh, appearance and uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, just kind of balance it's kind of uh, it's really fair isn't it I mean do, <laughs> they can, they can really understand because I mean if you usually sometimes when people do things that uh, make you feel uncomfortable or 
you know, just uh, are annoying. Then to make that person understand, the easiest thing is to do exactly the same thing to them. And the times that I've been the same, the times that I've looked them up and down from head to toe, they've not, <laughs> they've not enjoyed it. They've, yeah. uh, and it's like I always find it surprising that they they would look annoyed at uh-huh. me doing the same because I was like, well, what do you expect? You're doing it to me. What you think I can't do that back? You know, you don't think that's fair? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> especially looking up and down. Yeah, <laughs> so that's disrespectful. Uh huh. Uh-huh. So uh, that's uh, something you have to face uh, every mm. day. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Especially you are a Westerner mm-hmm. and a foreigner, yeah. and um, in Kunming and uh, in a lot of area, they still not get used to uh, foreigners. With, with foreigners, yeah. uh, that that's not like a, a developed place like mm-hmm. big cities. Uh, so you 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 have to get used to it sometimes. Yeah. yeah, I think I think I can understand the concept of me being different, particularly looking different, blonde hair, etc. Being a Westerner, people looking at me. But I think uh-huh. it's the difference between being looked at and being stared. And I draw the line at when you look back at someone and you clearly expressing that you know facial through your facial expression that you're not happy about the situation and then they will continue to stare but in a way that's it it almost seems like a vacant look that they it hasn't dawned on them that they they should stop staring at you because you're clearly annoyed uh Uh that that, to that level that i i just uh i i don't like that that's annoying Uh, Uh yeah so but i mean i can understand people just looking at me and oh you know you're different but yeah i think there has to be there's to be a line you know, staring <laughs> is a really implied way. Yeah, <laughs> I suddenly had a story. Uh, yeah. I, I've uh, I've traveled uh, in India a few years ago. Mm-hmm. At the first day, when I walk uh, with my wife on the street of Calcutta, and every man just staring at my wife. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> with with uh, some really enthusiastic. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, of uh, eyesight, <laughs> and uh, uh, that's okay. Cause uh, uh, they just look, and uh, my wife, th- uh, she think, uh, okay, maybe it's a uh, traditional or uh, cultural is different, and but they stare at me in a really uh, kind of, I think it's kind of unfriendly way, oh. and I, I, I think. Why? Because <laughs> uh, I'm a stranger to them. Mm-hmm. And at night, uh, in the evening, when when we come back from the street, back to the hotel, and I, I suddenly realized why. Because I'm wearing a blue shirt and with a red star on my a red uh, star, chest. Okay. A red star. It's uh. a kind of like a uh, military uh, <laughs> T-shirt. <laughs> yeah. And there are histories uh, with China and India decades ago. Uh-huh. With a uh, military conflict, yeah. and I, I think uh, <laughs> maybe their their unfriendly eyesight is because of that. And yeah. the, the next day, I change another uh, T-shirt; they'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> the next day, they are friendly. Totally different, yeah. Yeah, yeah. different. Yes. Uh, One day they think you're being nationalistic and kind of military style, and then the next day, yeah, no, no issue. I think um, because a a long time ago I was in India and I I traveled there, you know, for five months, and Uh I I do, um, I know what you're talking about when uh, to do with the looks that foreign women would would get because it's a segregated society. Men, you know, are not allowed much contact with women, Uh, even Uh even to the point on trains you have like uh, women carriages, male carriages. Yes, I hope it would be better. But <laughs> now, <laughs> now we have to do something uh, first. Maybe uh, ignore them, or mm. well, it's uh, hard to ignore. I mean, you, yeah. you can ignore. I mean, the way I see it is, is the first person you can ignore, or like you said, when you're in a good mood. But you know, when it becomes the tenth person, <laughs> the twentieth uh-huh. person, and then you're maybe not having such a good day, or there's been some other stresses, then then yeah. it becomes. I think it becomes much harder to ignore. But yeah, I agree with you. The best thing is just to ignore. People, uh, yeah. if they, if uh, second, if you cannot ignore, uh, maybe uh, mm. find something to fight back <laughs> with <laughs> your own, own eyesight or something, yeah, yeah. something else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, make them uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, <true. laughs> yeah. The other issue is that you can't change the nation. I mean, if you're in uh, a country and you know you can't deal with a behavior in one level or another, whether it's you have your way of just ignoring. Yeah, you either have to accept it complain about it and accept it or leave i mean there's no 
you can't like change you know a nation <laughs> yes <laughs> so the, way, the way i see it if you want to listen to travis's podcast in chinese go to beartalking.com that's b-e-a-r talking.com the link is in the show notes for this episode on my website Thanks for listening to the Rise of China and how it can benefit you podcast at www.brainstormlanguages.com.